that one. Don't we don't talk about that one. And you will speak with new tongues. Let me tell you a story. Real quick. Go ahead. A quick, quick story. You got I got a real friend, Clint Davidson. He pastors Kimberly First Baptist Church. He used right. to come and preach for us a right. little bit. Uh, he used to come to Forest City, Arkansas when I was in prison. Yeah. And one day, he's up preaching. He's got up on the movable baptism. About one third of the inmates in that prison were Spanish. Oh. Well, you know, Brother Clint, he don't do good with an interpreter. So he got plumb ahead of the interpreter. Oh, wow. The interpreter fell off. He's preaching in English. We get back to the pod, and the Spanish folks were talking about how Brother Davison, the capital C cessationist, the one that don't believe in speaking in tongues, was preaching in Spanish. In Spanish. Look him up on Facebook and message him and ask him. You, we will speak in new oh, tongues. Yes. It is not ended. It is oh, not over. No, no. It's still yes. relevant today. Yes. 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 They will pick up serpents. Now listen, we got so much faith in Short Creek, we handle alligators. Ooh, What's up with this right. I believe this is talking more about deliverance. Yeah, come on. And I believe that we saw that different things happen in the book of Acts. Right. We, we don't, I don't believe in tempting God. I think if you're going to grab, I got some good old boys. I mean, they'll show up to Sunday school when I'm without a shirt on. Yeah, he shows up to Sunday school, but he puts it on there to get inside. Yeah. And he will. He'll grab a rattlesnake. He don't care. He, I'm, I'm like, dude, that thing's got about 15 Ooh. rattlers on it. You Ooh. playing with it? Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to go get that shotgun and shoot that thing. So, but, but I ain't handling no live snakes. I'll, I'll handle the dead. I'll handle the spiritual snake. Right. And if they drink any deadly thing, you will not hurt them. And if they lay hands on the sick, then they will recover. These signs have become common in some local churches and not so common in others. But it said that they will follow those that believe. What? They'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll pick up serpents and drink any deadly thing and they'll not harm them and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It doesn't say it might happen. It says that it will happen if you believe. Tell you about our process at the beginning of the year. These signs will. If there are no signs, there must be an issue with the beliefs. Right. What if we believe what we believe, the doctrine that we believe, is what we teach and preach from behind our pulpits? If I don't believe it, I don't preach it. Come I don't on. teach it. Well, I would be hypocritical if I preach one thing and believe something else. Somebody say amen, right? I can't do that. If you're doing that, stop it. That ain't cool. Change your beliefs, preach your beliefs, or just don't preach it. If you have been paying attention, you can clearly see a few things happen in America. The true church has been fading away for generations. Gen Z folks are more attracted to the occult because there is power with the occult. Yeah, come on. And the American church has became powerless. Yeah. I mean, I'm come serious. On, Man, we see some kids getting into some weird stuff. We got lots of Gen Z. We 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 dedicated six babies. You know, them are young folks. Them are Gen Z and millennial folks. They have gotten into some weird stuff. The, the occult is common yeah, with come this on. generation. Why? Because there's power in the occult. That's it. You know, I, and I do. We fellowship with our Baptist brothers. Bud Creek Baptist Association. Good to send us money for intake fees. Union Hill Baptist Church. Sometimes I'll get a message in the morning. Brother Mike Stevens say, I'm praying for you. I hope you have it. If they got somebody struggling with addiction, let me tell you something else. If they got somebody struggling with a demon, they send him over too. So I, I love my Baptist brothers, but let me tell you, let me tell plainly what's going on. The occult has power. Right. And, and the Reformed brothers preach that the occult has power. But then they turn around and somehow we have stripped the power from the church Whoa. to deal Whoa. with the demons Whoa. that are going on. Good. So we become polarized. Yeah. We become polarized by politics. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Look, when, when I seen that thing, and, and I did, I voted for God. I even got my American hey dudes on. Malik and I, we 
turned it from four syllables to two. America, we're trying to get it all the way down to one. We're, we're working on that. I'll say something like that. He'll say, well, Pastor Ron, those are your people. I'm like, amen, those are my people. Right. I can make fun of them if I want to. That's so, right. Go ahead. But we become so polarized by politics that our churches have been split down the middle. How many people remember the opiate, the opiate epidemic back in the 90s? Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah, that's what got me. You know, it was the Republicans that got Purdue Pharma out of all that stuff. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I, yeah I, and I, and like, listen, I'm going to vote against abortion. Just that's how, You want to know how I'm going to vote? I'm going to vote against abortion, period. Right, right. But the Republicans defended Purdue Pharma. And how many people did they kill? Somebody say, oh, amen. Amen. You, 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 Pinch, you know, he was a big tobacco. How many, pe how many people are destroyed by tobacco? And the Republicans defend them. Listen, I'm all about capitalism, but capitalism has gone crazy. Yeah, come on, brother, preach. But the true gospel's been compromised. Come Repentance, on. the cross of Christ, and Jesus as being the only way to reconcile with Abba Father is seldom preached in most churches today. Come on. So let's talk about some stats. I like, I'm, I'm a Go little finance guy. Down. I like numbers. I like percentages. I like averages. I like looking at stats. Right. Arizona Christian University, American Worldview Inventory. Get this. In 2020 found that only 6% of all American adults have a biblical worldview. Right. Wow. <laughs> Man, these are real simple statements. Right. Jesus is the Son of God. Right. Good and evil exist. There's only one way to heaven. Only 6% in 2020 wow. of, Amer of the American church in America believe that. Or the American church. And 70% identify as Christian. That dropped 33% from 2020 to 2023. Wow. Our church has been compromised with a different Come gospel. On, that's right. Among 18 to 29 year olds, the number is 2%. Only 2 out of 100 people have a biblical worldview in our country that's between the ages of 18 and 29. Wow. More shockingly, researchers found that just 21% of those attend an evangelical Protestant church have a biblical. That, uh, that's our churches. Oh. That's the church. That's the gospel churches. Oh. Only 21% believe that there's only one way to reconcile with God. They believe in subjective morality. Wow. Morality is not subjective. It's objective. It's either or. It's either or either or not. It's no. There's no in between. Right. That's right. The vast majority of evangelical evangelical Christians believe that there are multiple ways to heaven other wow. than than through Jesus. Yep. You begin to ask them the question. They say, "Yeah, good Muslims will break it. You know why? Don't you? You know why?" Because Billy Graham said that. Look it up. Yeah. I promise you, he did. He did. I heard uh, good, good Muslims will make it. Yeah. Good Muslims. No, 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 no. Listen, the only way our Muslims will make it is confess Jesus Come as on, the Lord. only way to reconcile Come with the Father and as his Lord and Savior. Good Buddhists will make it. No, good Buddhists don't make it into heaven unless they turn their back from that demon religion and turn their face directly to God. Come on, You know, the, the Catholic Church, they had a great idea, right? We can't kill them. Let's just join them. So they, they, Constantine come in, and how, how did they convert Christians, right? They went into the pagans with the spear, and they said, hey, convert to Christianity or die. They're like, hold on just a second. I get to be a Roman citizen. All I got to do is confess Jesus as God. Absolutely. The problem is somebody forgot to tell them they had to stop worshiping the other gods. Somebody's forgot to tell the American church. You got to turn your back on the other gods. The majority of the people in the United States identify as Christians, but only a small percentage say that they've been born again. Man, I'm talking about I think, I think when I look at it, 17%. 17%. If you walk around here, 9 out of 10 people are going to say they're, they're, they're Christians, right? But only about 2 out of 10 are going to say 
that they've been born again. But some, somebody's not preaching John 3. Come on. Somebody's not preaching John 3. Right. Somebody ain't even going to church. They think they they think they're a Christian because Mama was a Christian. Mama don't get you to heaven. Let me tell you what Mama will get you. She'll get you a generational curse. Come She'll on. get you a familiar spirit. No. She'll eat you up with demons. Cause if Mama don't repent, Daddy gets it. If Daddy don't repent, it gets passed down. Come on. Altar with Come a man. On. Young man, this morning. And man, we get a revelation. I mean, he last Friday night, we're praying demons, or a couple Fridays ago, we're praying demons out of it. Second time, I see it, blood involved with the deliverance. All of a sudden, he's coughing up blood. He goes again through it, and then he come down. He, he didn't want to come up again. I said, young man, come up. God, I'm praying for everybody else, but I can't help but to think about him. I get him up there, and that demon begin to manifest. The growling and the spitting and the shaking. I'm not talking about about a drug addict. I'm not talking about an uneducated man. I'm talking about a fella that's going to Birmingham Southern. You don't get into Birmingham Southern unless you're a citizen. You don't get into Birmingham Southern unless you're smart. You don't get into Birmingham Southern unless your family's got a little bit of money. Because I know my daughter got a 35 on her ACT and I was still going to have to pay $20,000 a year. To get her into Birmingham right? Southern. It would have been cheaper to send her to Yale and Harvard than to Birmingham Southern. Uh -huh. But when I got that revelation, I began to call out that generational spirit. Man, that old demon got mad. He began to shake and just get all twisted up on the inside. Let me tell you something. Come on. He's still got more demons. Come on. I wish I could get them all out at once, but I realize I can't. You know, the, the thing the deliverance ministry is missing is the pastoring aspect. Come on. Come on, preach. But only 9%, that's the number, who say they are Christians have a biblical worldview. We got three main, you know, Josh mentioned this, and he mentioned three other false gospels. I thought that was cool. I, I'd already had this before you preached your sermon this morning. So <laughs> thing tell, but I got three other false gospels. Three false gospels that have deep toward the American church that have rendered the church a social club, that have made the church just something to do on Sunday morning to check off a box. That have made the church, hey, if the preacher goes a little bit wrong, I'm going to rattle my keys. Listen, if you want to get out at 12 o'clock, don't come to Short Creek because we don't get out to 1 o'clock. Because when I get through preaching and I'm going to preach to 12, we're going to pray for people for an hour. We still believe in divine healing. We still believe in laying hands on the sick of the team. What else we believe in? We believe in healing because we have seen God heal people in several in this world. The prosperity gospel. Listen, the tenets of the prosperity gospel, the word of faith are correct. The object is wrong. Come on. Listen, our words do not have creative power. They have cultivated power. Come See, on. the number one reason people are demonized is because they can't forgive. Right. Let me give you some good news. You're right. You can't forgive. That's right. This is where Philippians 4, 13 applies. I can do all things through Christ oh, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. See, but when I begin to proclaim forgiveness about that individual, about how they wronged me, I cultivate the power of the Holy Spirit to come on and change me from the inside out, giving me the power to forgive. So I forgive everyone who's hurt me and when I lie to them ladies up at City of Lights, I go through it and I call everything out. I'm talking about every one of them have been sexually abused, bought and sold like rag dolls for their whole life. And as I begin to call that out and they begin to say they forgive by the grace of God and in the name of Jesus, they begin to weep and they begin to cry. And all of a sudden that legal right has been canceled and every Thursday night that new one comes in and we pray demons out of her. And sometimes we have to go back a few times. Let me tell you what every addict needs. Every addict that's ever existed, every alcoholic, if you've ever struggled with porn, yeah, if on. you've ever struggled with anything, you got a critter and you need to be delivered from that critter. Come yeah. on. That's right. Come on. So their tenets are right. We proclaim forgiveness and invite the grace of God. Proclaim, we invite the resurrection power of God to flow up from our inside and cultivate the power 
word of God to truly forgive. Right. Our words cultivate the promises of God in our lives. Absolutely. Our faith isn't in our faith, but it's in Jesus Christ and his finished work. Right. Amen. It is emphatically God's will to heal everybody. Absolutely. Because of God. Sometimes God can't heal us because of our lack of faith. And I know a lot of people that got saved because they got a diagnosis. Right. And, and they may be gone now, but if they got saved before they went, they're in heaven, right? Right. Yeah. right. They ain't caught up with it, right? right? I ain't thinking about that diagnosis anymore. No. We need to fix our eyes on the eternal no. things and no. thank God that they turn their life no. around. No. If your eyes are fixed on your career, your house, your retirement, your bank account, or your education, you will be incredibly disappointed. Now, this is the next one. This is the one I come from, the work-based gospel. Or we believe denominationalism over the kingdom of God. Oh, right. We're, we're more passionate about our denomination than we are what God is doing in the kingdom. Come on, this is an old school Pentecostal churches that are okay with Sister Smith dyeing her hair blonde, but have an issue with a 13-year-old dyeing their hair green. That's a that's a workspace gospel. Right. They'll pierce their ears but condemn the 12-year-old for piercing their nose. They think the pastor must be in a coat in a tie. Oh. They think tattoos are sin, but they eat shrimp and trim their beard every Sunday. Come on. They have food addiction, but condemn those that smoke or bathe. They think that the KJV is the only Bible. They would rather have their traditions than the manifest presence of God. How someone dresses in their church is more important than where they spend. That person spends eternity. Did you get that? Because it's not God's church. It's their church. We got to get back to God's church. We got to get to attracting the least in the community. Don't get me started on Matthew 25 because God separated the goat and the sheep. And he, and, and yeah, let me tell you something. That this is, there is works that happen after there's a connection. But I don't work for my connection. I get saved and it changes me. If I don't have a change and feel like reaching out to the least in the community, something didn't happen inside of me. Come on. Come on. Good. There's a, a female preacher. She used to be my. She's widowed, and her husband was my pastor. Man, I loved him. She looked at my mom one day, and this is Joel Craig, just a couple of young people. Aren't you afraid to go to church for folks like that? Hey, what are you doing, man? I got a guy just got discharged from prison, doing life in prison. Got all the Aryan, the swastikas. And I got a black doctor sitting by. Somebody say amen. 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 Let me tell you something, because we got something in common. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. Right. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah, so we got some rough folks. Yeah. yeah. We got some high folks. We got some of them that have to smoke a boobie before they come in church and you can smell it on them when they show up. We do. Come on. And they're going to get free. Come on. We got some of them that smell like alcohol. I don't care. I, I, I want the least in my community because God told me that if I didn't reach out to the least, that he would separate me and put me in the wrong line. I don't do it because of that's what he said. I do that because he changed something on the inside of me. We had guest visitors a couple weekends ago when Danelle was there, and, and they're there, and you know, and I love them and everything, but I didn't hang out with them. I went out with a guy that reached out to me and said, hey, I got a problem. I, I'm demonized. I got something going on. I, I stood right there with him. I wasn't trying to impress the guest preacher. I was concerned about the person that come to church. I don't need to impress nobody. I need to impress Jesus. And my heart is to the broken. Right. Come on. The, the, the workspace gospel, they operate under the influence of the spirit of offense. They can't be reflected, uh, corrected, and they refuse to consider the fact that they might be wrong. How many people know you just might be wrong? Come on. You know what I'm convinced of? There's some things about my doctrine that I might be wrong. Absolutely. I, I might be wrong on a few things. Right. Everybody say amen. 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 They, they ain't a preacher out there that's got everything all. right. They ain't a church that's got everything right. Everybody's got to have that, have that understanding that
that there's one way to reconcile with God and above that everything else just sort of gets muddled. Right. But let me tell you there is a remnant that is here that are laying hands yes. on the sick. There's a remnant that are here that are casting out demons yes. on a regular basis. Yes. So I might be wrong. And I've been wrong about a lot of things. Yep. Yeah. They concentrate on the external attributes of a person. Let me tell you something. You can't save anyone. It's the church's job to love them and the Holy Spirit's job to convict them. Let me tell you, when I correct somebody, it's when I know the Holy Spirit's put it on my heart. Let me tell you what happens. I begin to pray for that person, and I can't tell you how many times that person's come to me and said, Brother Ron, I got a problem I need to talk about. Yeah, I still believe that God talks. I know the main way He talks is through His Word, but He still gives us words of knowledge. He still gives us prophetic words. And I'm not talking about, you know, the transfer of wealth and, and who's going to win the election. I'm talking about what an individual struggling with. Come when on. You can speak life into Come them on. and see an immediate change in their life. When they know, I've had them look at me in the city of lights and say, how'd you know that? I'm like, I don't know how I do it. If I'd have thought about it a little while, I would have never let it come out of my mouth. Come on. <laughs> and then we got, uh, when we try to convict, we end up condemning. Yeah. And then we got the other one. Repentance isn't necessary. God covers all my sins, past, present, and future. And I don't have to repent from it. Uh-huh. Let me let you know a little secret. Okay. Oh, help us. I believe you're going to be saved one time. I don't believe you get saved. I can't find it in Scripture. That's the reason the church got a cross and fired me on a Facebook post. Let me tell you why they really fired me because God hardened my heart. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Great. But if you can live in unrepentant sin, hmm. You might want to evaluate yourself. Come on. You might want to find an altar. Yeah. You might want to ask God. You might want to go to 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and test yourself to see if you're actually in the faith. Right. Well, there's another Barnett poll that was really surprising. A nationwide survey of American Christian pastors showed that the majority of pastors lack a biblical worldview. In fact, just slightly more than a third wow. possess. I'm talking about pastors. Wow. Wow. Only 37% of pastors hold to a biblical worldview. And you're wondering why the church has no power. Because they have departed. They have fallen away. They are preaching deism and not that God is the one true God. All right. Come on. They, they hold to what they call a hybrid worldview. A veteran researcher, the CRC director of research, George Barner, explains... It's just further evidence that culture is influencing the American church much more than Christian churches are influencing the culture. Wow. Everybody probably seen that stuff with Andy Stanley, right? He just kept slipping away, slipping away, slipping away. This is a, I got family members that are in one of them letters. And I love them. I'm going to keep loving them. And I'm going to stand on that promise. I'm going to delight myself in the Lord, and he's going to give me the desires of my heart. I'm going to believe Philippians 1, 6, that God that started a work in them is going to perfect it. I ask some folks sometimes, I said, how does that work out for you? You've got sideways when you're coming back. Let me tell you how it worked out for me. Uh, May the 25th of 2007, I had the FBI going through my garbage. That's how God perfected the work that he started in me. I got to come on, federal prison. Yeah. You've been paying really a close attention. Revival has come through a remnant of millennial and Gen Z folks who are starving for an experience, an authentic encounter with the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, over 5,000 people attended the second annual deliverance conference at Global Vision in a tent with no air conditioning. I want you to think about that. A tent. A football breaking out. Did, did everybody play football yesterday? The first half of football season? Well, about 8,000 of them went to a tent in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Why? Because they're hungry. They're thirsty. People reach out to me every week say, I can't sleep. Things are moving around my house. And I'm not talking about crazy people. I'm talking about educated folks. Demons are real. They're really haunting people. They're really terrorizing people. And God has really put the power in every Christian to get that demon out of the person. Come on. Still 5,000 people. No hours of church. They opened the church at 3, at 12. They started the service at 3. People were lining up to get in at 9 o'clock. They're parking a mile away to walk to get there. 
They packed 5,000 in the tent. There were thousands outside. And they invited in who they called the demon slayers. I know you'll think they might be crazy. And I used to think they was crazy too. But let me tell you what I was. I was wrong. Right. Pastor Greg Locke, and listen, when he was riding around with Trump, I couldn't stand him. Preached against him. I'm like, get that politics from behind the pulpit. And something happened to him. About two and a half years ago, he went to baptize a, 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 a lady and her eight-year-old granddaughter. And all of a sudden, the eight-year-old granddaughter full-on manifested a demon. Mm -hmm. And he went and prayed and cried for two weeks because he didn't know what to do. He said, I've been going to Africa. I've seen demons uh, manifest. But when I seen one manifest right in front of me, I didn't know what to do. So he went and prayed. God took him down. He got a book by Alexander Pagani. And he began to read it. And they started casting demons out. So it is real. We have a population of 874 people in our community. I don't know. It may be 876. It might be 872. It changes, I think, when people move. Yeah. We baptized 152 folks in 2019. <clears throat> Last month, we dedicated six babies to the Lord. Deliverance from demons is common. We have witnessed multiple people miraculously healed. Yeah. We have three main services a week, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and Friday night. And that parking lot's full. The church is packed. There's hardly a week that goes by that we don't have a first-time visitor in that church. And they come hours away. Hour, why? Because people are hungry for an authentic move of God. Right. And they don't need their pastor in a tie and a coat. Listen, if you want to wear a tie and a coat, that's okay. But some of the people we minister to, I'm going to look like their parole officer and it don't go over good. Come on. Come on. And, and, and David remembered when I used to have to wear it. A coat and a tie. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't doing that no more. Yeah. I mean, I will want a funeral or something like that or a wedding. In 2019, we had about 10 people attended. We have around 75 most Sundays right, or more. We average about 40 to 50 in four different Sunday school classes. We have to have them. Our church is small. We have to have them in three different locations. Some at my house, some at the church, and some down at the box. And yes. I believe every church should have a box. <laughs> now, this is not me. I didn't do this. This isn't the leaders of the church. This is an authentic move of the Holy Spirit. I'm not preaching to condemn anyone or to elevate Short Creek. Just to let everyone know that revival is here and what we have done to see the move of God at our local church. One of the things that the pandemic did was a good thing. It exposed those who were not serious about their relationship with Christ. And it exposed churches who were simply going through the motion. Come on. I got to reach out to Leah. Tell me a while back that they had $150,000 in the bank. And I'm like, whoa, man, what can I do with $150,000? And one of the family members needed to go to Teen Challenge. We're wrong because we said we keep seven to 15 people. We probably get three to four to five people in rehab every month. We pay their intake fees and make sure they got the what they need. We do that. And he said, well, man, I got a, a family members. They clean our church. Their son needs to go to rehab. I'm like, cool. Let's get him in Teen Challenge. I think that'd be the best. That's what he told me. I said, y'all got the six hundred fifty dollars to clean? I guess he was the guy who told me he, they had one hundred fifty thousand. But what it was, he was afraid to go to the deacon board and ask him that he needed six hundred fifty right. one hundred fifty thousand. They were more worried about stained glass windows and whatever and stuff like that than they were about. See that renders the when you are more concerned oh, yeah. about chairs when you are more concerned about the appearance of the oh. church than you are seeing lives turned around you have missed the point of the gospel oh, you know it, it's easy to make assumptions about a place you've never visited that's right we do have folks at Shore Creek who are struggling with addiction but the majority of our folks at Shore Creek are just people who desire to be a part of an authentic move of God I mean, I'm talking about educated folks. I'm talking about uh, veterans, people that have served their countries. I got, I got more educators and degrees than I can even count in the church, and they're still getting degrees. School teachers, people that a lady that owns a private school that's been doing it for 30 years, and she's up there in the floor with me praying demons out of people. Why? Because she understands the gospel. Right. Come on. Come on, man. All of our outreach centers around the addiction industry. At any given time, we'll have about 7 to 15 various faith-based rehabs. 
Uh, and we are diligent to pay their intake fees. The Muck Creek Baptist Association and Fairview Church, Joshua Decrees, I guess he did a good job. They sent the church a $500 check. That was a good sermon, sir. I yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, and we're committed to that. We're committed to helping you. Every week, we have multiple people reach out to us for two reasons, deliverance and help with addiction. The people that reach out for deliverance aren't addicts. No. They're not alcoholics. No. They, they, they're educated. Yeah. They're diligent. They're citizens. Right. They have good credit. Right. They get up and go to work every day. Five food. They, they're, they're, they're what I call it. They ain't, when we looked at their credit report, we'd call them a citizen. That's what we would refer to them. They're citizens. They do a good job. They live a good life. So I want to share a couple of deliverance testimonies with you. I'm going to start off with Marilyn's. So when Marilyn and I got together, oh yeah. When Marilyn and I got together, we're going to church in Jasper. Yeah. And she had an encounter with the Lord. She was Baptist, you know, the kind of Baptist that don't raise your hand. Uh oh. Kind of Baptist like this. She didn't even open anything because she didn't, because if you opened anything, you were quiet when you sit down that kind of Baptist. I mean, real quiet, 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 quiet Baptist. You did that totally yeah. But she has an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and for three days, 72 oh. solid hours, she threw up, she passed out. She fell down. I didn't, had no idea what was going on. And I would pick her up and take her back to the bed for three days. Then I had COVID and we have Mike Cox, you know, Church H2O. You know, they're dabbling in the addiction ministry, so he and I are connected. And uh, one of our preacher friends was there, and, and I got COVID. I'm not even there that night. That preacher friend looks at uh, Marilyn and says, Why can't I pray for you? You got something to say? I said, No, I ain't got nothing. After the third time, she said, well, yeah, actually, I do. I, I've been on Zoloft for 13 years. What is 13 years? 13 years. At this time, she's on 150 milligrams of Zoloft. She, he begins to do what deliverance ministers do and have a conversation with her and calls out a spirit of fear. What is a spirit of fear? She was afraid. Her first husband died. She was afraid I was going to die. She full on manifests. She had forgot to take her Zoloft the day before and come off 150 milligrams of Zoloft and listen, no withdrawals. Don't get in. You know, she'll have to share the other story because she had another deliverance. See, that's the pastor's wife. Yeah. Walker County Jail, May 27th, 2007. I'm praying. I'm arrested. Listen, I'm doing morphine. I'm doing Oxycontin. I'm doing meth. I'm anything... Drinking every day and working, but man, I live my life high. Anybody ever come off opiates? I mean, it's, it's brutal. Well, anyway, I'm praying, and here I am. I don't care. I'm praying in the Spirit. I know how to pray in tongues. I didn't know what to pray. The Holy Spirit to go when I'm praying. All of a sudden, the cell goes dark. I'm oh, oh Lord, I'm losing my mind. So I just prayed hard. I can't see anything. The cell's dark. The doors didn't open. Doors didn't lock at that time, so everybody could hear me. People couldn't peek in and see what was going on. I'm crying my eyes out, praying in tongues, and there I am. And the cell goes dark. And off in the distance, I see a light. The light gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets to me. It asks me a question. Wow. Oh, I'm going to the rest of it. Listen, I walk out of there five days later, no withdrawal. So I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, what happened? Demons come out of me in that Walker County Jail. Right. Everybody turn around and look at Malik. Raise your hand, Malik. Malik is another citizen. 11 Bravo, infantryman, specialist in the National Guard. Graduated Gardnell with honors. Has never been in a physical altercation. I got in physical altercations in kindergarten. <laughs> he said he learned how to act, by, how not to do by the way other people do. Well, he reached out to me. His friend was coming to church, and he reached out to me. He said, I understand you do exorcism. I said, well, I'm not Catholic. I don't do exorcism. Just come to church. Right. <laughs> so about, what has it been, three months? So about three months ago, he comes in, and he sits down. I don't know what I'm preaching. About two-thirds through the sermon, he goes out in what I identify as a demonic trance. And there he is growling. Well, somehow, the young lady gets him up front, and he's standing there growling at me. I sort of snickered because I knew what was about to happen. I'm like, devil, you done exposed yourself. I reach over there and lay hands on him. He falls like, like a tree. Bam! 
Well, I got a whole bunch of people to pray for, so I told the men to go over there. They prayed for him. He convulsed, come, just jumped up off the ground like that. He convulsed so hard, and a witchcraft spirit come off of him. And then a couple days later, he has an oppression for him that really breaks down. He deals with a spirit of rejection. He also dealt with a generational spirit that come in four generations ago. And what we're doing is we're digging. We're getting spirits out. So Barbara Morland and I met with him three times. He comes at me and spirits come out. He attacks me. I'm like, dude. I, you know, if you spend time with him, he's the most calm. If he slips up and says yes, he immediately apologizes and says yes, sir. I don't have to tell him to take it. Listen, I like him so much, I moved him in with me. We, we, we knew it was God it was in there. So he attacked me three times. Somebody asked him, how'd it go, Malik? He said, well, I woke up, face down on the ground, my hat off, one shoe off. I don't know if you have to ask him. <laughs> so he comes to the altar. The demon man comes across. I, I reserved the back part of the altar so I can get in there and pray for him. So they all gathered around him. Manifest again, he come across the altar at me. Whatever is in him didn't like me. I had a guy tell me one time, he said, I don't know what's in you, but whatever's in me, don't like what's in you. And I watched his big old bald tattooed forehead. I watched sweat being out of his head. And, and hey, listen, that ain't the demon. That's the fire of the Holy Spirit. He come across the altar at me. Finally, we're wrestling with him. Man, he's got some supernatural strength. He, whatever's in Malik, this, I love this young man. He come at me. That demon was coming at me. Finally, Marilyn's like, he's out, he's out, he's out. Let him go. So then he decides to go spend the night with his mom. He just, he's taking his mom. He's like I am. He's a mom's boy. We saw that. We moved his mom in with him too, with us too. So we're all good now. So there, he gets about to the interstate, manifest again. A young lady calls and says, I got to bring him over. back. I got her on lock. I'm going to drive $100 an hour. Something must be wrong with me. She said, meet me outside. I said, okay, I'm going to meet you outside. And then I walk out there, and there Malik is growling again. The Lord said, don't wrestle with him. Don't fight him. So he stepped toward me, and he fell flat on his face, hands to his side, and slithers in the wet grass like a snake. Marilyn gets a word from the Lord. Here she comes in her nightgown with her Bible, lays the Bible. And Malik that night was delivered from a desire to vain. And then, man, I said, listen, how be it some kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. So I started fasting. Then watch no secular TV. I, I, I ate a little bit because, I don't know, I just, I need food every now and then. I need a lot of fast. I need a time. But it was enough. The Lord began to tell me that there was a spirit that come into Malik when his father rejected him. Because Malik didn't have a, he's got a father now. Let me tell you how father was. So we're in a marriage class. Pumps three tables over and comes at me again. I mean, it was wild. He's coming at me. And then, it, I don't know if y'all know Danny. Danny's a real live lumberjack. He's 50 something. He still cuts trees. I mean, his arms as big as Matt's head. And Matt has a big head. <laughs> <laughs> they call him the Christian Lord. Josh and Matt have him. They're over the leaf now. And the Lord told me to rebuke the demon. I rebuked the demon. I said, I don't want to talk to Malik. Shut up. In the name of Jesus. I said, Malik, I love you. He said, Marilyn, I love you. We want to be your spiritual parents. Do you accept us as your spiritual parents? He said, yes, sir, I love you. And that last demon left. Somebody say, like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That, that testimony is sitting behind me. That, 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 this is a man that defends our country. This is an infantry man. This man played football at Gardendale, graduated with honors. This man is a citizen. He's lived a, a great life. I don't have to tell him to clean up or take out the garbage or wash it. Marilyn's always saying, don't wash the dishes. No, leave him alone. Let him wash the dishes. <laughs> Paige, I wish they were here tonight. She's a young lady that had dabbled with the occult and witchcraft. We started her deliverance around 2 o'clock. I mean, you're talking about a strong, red-headed, determined, fiery, 105-pound uh, young lady. She's it, man. She ain't no joke. But when we begin to pray and call out all the trauma and the abuse, the demons manifest, and she begins to scream and groan. And I would rebuke the demon to say, 
okay to be okay to know I'm hurting because they, sometimes they twist you from the inside out. Time after time again for two hours, and I finally said, man, I can't see her go through this anymore. She come back to church that night. Out there in the field, the demon manifested again that night. Mm -hmm. And we prayed the last bit of demons off of her. That's Paige. She got delivered from vaping and tried to vape twice. You know what happens? Two times she passed out. Robbie, he's a lieutenant for the Birmingham Fire Department. If you see the Birmingham Fire Department on the news, you're going to see Robbie Allison. He is their poster child. He's like the Clark Kent of the Birmingham. He, is, he holds the second highest position in our board. But he had some stuff. We prayed for him. Demons manifested. He didn't try to beat me up or anything. Thank the Lord. I've seen him do some unreal things. You've seen me videos of house fires that he's going in pulling burning ceilings down on him. I don't know. He couldn't read his Bible. Couldn't pray. This is a, a leader in our church. This is a leader on our board of directors, on the pastor's council. Got baptized when he was a kid. Come from an excellent family. His mom and dad are still married. He was drinking 24 Dr. Mountain Dew today. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you're drinking that many Dr. Mountain Dews, I don't know how they get on that color, but that can't be good. I'm just going to break it. 24. And he was vaping. He was going through a vape every few days. Instantly delivered. There's been five times at Short Creek people have woken up with weird scratches all over their body. There was one time we're praying for a young lady. Ashley and I, the, the Lord told me to get up. Because what we do, we'll pray them out in the altar. But after that, we're going to get together, me and Marilyn, we're going to sit down and talk to you. We're going to make sure we got them all. And sometimes we got to spend a little more time with you. See, there's a pastoring aspect to the Oh, man. I've seen people. Pop up foamy stuff. I've seen people projectile vomit. I even watched one lady sneeze as the demon comes out, huge humps of blood. I pass out all the time as demons come out of them. The Holy Spirit falls on them. I watch them sweat profusely. I even have got one that's coughed up blood. They scream. They get unreal abdominal pain, pressure on their neck. They twist in unnatural ways. And I've been attacked five times now, taking folks through deliverance. Don't tell me it's not real. It's, it's real. And the revival is here. It's the change. It's the change. Listen, I, you can scream and holler and puke, and that, that's cool. How are you afterwards? Come on. That's, that's the change. Listen, if you got a demon, you're not making your own decisions. The demon's making the The demon is talking to you. And you think that what it is saying, you think that is in your mind. It's not in your mind. It is in your mind, but it's not your thought. Anyway, we're praying for this one. Like the Lord tells me to stand up. I get around to the back. How much like, scratches are appearing on her neck? There's about five of them. I watched them appear. <laughs> I watched the scratches appear. I grabbed oil. I begin to rub it all over them. All of them just faded away as fast as they come. But one stayed. I said, Ashley, come here. Look, look, look. Ashley Barnes. She said, this. It ran down her back. We prayed a spirit of witchcraft off her. She said, I don't know. I've always been turned out her aunt was a witch. She didn't even know it. She had a generational spirit. So healing. Around the first of the year, you can go back and watch this video. It is our uh, Maryland and Wayland's the most watched video. The second most video is Maryland uh, getting healed. Two minutes into the video, Maryland has rheumatoid arthritis. And it got into her hip. She couldn't hardly move. I had to pick her up and help her up and get her to church. At the end of the church, the Lord said, pray for her. She could barely get up. I had to help her up to get prayer. But about two minutes into the video, the pain rolls off her leg. And she begins to jump and shout because God healed her. You can watch that. You can watch her get healed on YouTube. I, I get a new doctor, right? And, and I go see him. I had this spot on my head. It's getting bigger. You know, skin cancer is an issue, right? So it, it is an issue. I'm like, I need to get it checked out. And the Lord said, You haven't even prayed about it. I got an appointment with a dermatologist. The Lord said, You haven't even prayed about it. 
I said, okay, Lord. I picked up the oil. I said, Lord, if you don't mind, in the name of Jesus. Two days it was gone. It had been there for like five yeah. to seven years, and it was getting bigger. I looked look like I had a Hindu scar in the middle of my head. I don't need no scars, not on my face anyway. So Joey Bynes, he, he, he's a, he, he was in a motorcycle club. We had the opportunity to love on him to fix an electrical problem, and he comes to church. You know, I can even tell, I mean, you know, he, he had a rough past, the most tender hearted. If I could take his heart and put it in everybody else in church, I would never have to do anything at the church. That's like Malik. He, he lives with me, so on Saturday mornings we go fix things at the church. He's like, we're going to do what? And you're the pastor. You're a busy pastor, aren't you? Yeah, we're going to go fix the toilets. Let's go. We're going to go paint something. We're going to do something. Well, he took care of his kids by tattooing. All these tattoos except one. The horn to preach. He outlined that one. He did the rest of it. Well, he couldn't tattoo anymore because his wrist was out that way. He couldn't. Think about having surgery. I just felt the Lord say, pray for him. Called him up. The Lord healed his wrist. He's been tattooing like a madman ever since taking care of his family. That little girl with a sprained ankle. Jalipin! God healed her immediately! And she was running around! That Randall, dealing with stress and anxiety, had TMJ and pain. These are things, I'm not telling you things I read about. I'm telling you things that have happened at a church that is in revival for four years. And we're not taking off the gas. We're going forward. Oh, man. We see he got healed instantly. He has no more TMJ. He got babies with fevers on the way to the ER by the time they get there. They were 104 when they left. They're 98.4 when they get to the ER. <laughs> but we've seen it. Wow. But listen, the revival is not coming here. The revival is here. Of course, it's going to amplify as our country dissolves into a civil war. Yeah, it, I, I really believe it's coming. It's coming. I, 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 don't, I don't know how it's happening. Yeah, it, yeah. it's happening. It's coming. What well, I don't want to do now is to get a worship team to come up. <clears throat> I just want to know if anybody need any prayer. You need to get my altar or you just come up. And I'll lay hands and pray on you. If you ain't got nothing wrong with you, I'll kick you in the knee, knock your knee out, and pray for you. <laughs> so worship a little bit. If you want prayer for any reason, I want you to come on. Listen, I believe God still heals cancer. We, we've seen too many miracles. I still I believe God heals. Amen. I know that God heals. I know God wants you to I know God wants you to be healed. I believe that. I believe He's a good father. Did some, yeah. You, you got hard to hear David's testimony. You know, let me tell you who I saw in the Walker County Jail. I saw Jesus. That's good. Let me tell you something. The scars right here, they are this. I saw him. It changed me. My daddy had asked him, You're going quit a career making three to four hundred thousand dollars a year and coach people online and you got job offers to go back to work and you're not taking them I'm like I just can't I know God's got something different for me yeah well, we went to school people we went full time and we we're not lacking for anything no. we got everything we need our old old six Avalon it runs it just got a hundred thousand miles it runs good my old old eight Ford F-150, it's as plain as they come, but it runs good. we got everything we need. And we're well taken care of. God provides. Amen. Don't you need any, anything at all? Mm -hmm. I <laughs> huh? Any eternal gift. If you're struggling to forgive somebody, to let go of something. Um, let me walk you through confessing forgiveness in just a minute. Y'all stand and let's uh, worship.
Just like